Cedric Claims Management Services is not a disability insurance company. However, if you have a claim that's being managed by Sedgwick Claims Management Services, you've probably already experienced the nightmare that they're probably going to put you through. They're definitely on my top three list of the worst disability insurance related companies to deal with. So Sedgwick is a, what's called a third party administrator, which means that whatever employer you work for or whatever company is providing your actual disability insurance benefit, Sedgwick is the one who's going to usually have the discretion to administer the claim and make the decision as to whether or not you should be paid. Now, Steve and I have worked on a lot of claims for employees that have Sedgwick, that have disability policies managed by Sedgwick. And Sedgwick, just for example, they manage the AT&T plan. They do work for Walmart. They do work for GE as well. And it's no secret that if you've located us through the internet and you did a Google search on Sedgwick claims that you can see the hundreds of complaints that are out there on the internet about Sedgwick. So, Sedgwick really doesn't have a stake in the game in the sense of if they pay benefits, their profits are going to go down. Their stake more is you employer, for example, let's use AT&T as a reference here. You hire us to manage your claims and we'll try to keep you happy by getting your people back to work as soon as possible. So in this whole world of disability claims, the employer in most cases doesn't want you out on disability. They want you back at work. And Sedgwick, as a third party administrator, has an incentive to try to say, look, your people went out on disability and we either help them get back to work, which is, in my opinion, also known as denied their benefits very quickly so that they really have no option but to go back to work. And the perfect scenario of that is, let's be real practical about this. A person makes you know, $50,000 a year. They're going to get a monthly, usually it's short term disability. Sometimes they're going to get 100% of their benefit. They file their claim with Sedgwick. It's usually seven days or 14 days that they have to be out of work before they're going to be eligible for benefits. They file it. The 14 day rolls around. Sedgwick says, sorry, we're not going to pay you. Why aren't they going to pay? Because they sent their, the records that the claimant sent them to an internal doctor or some outside doctor who said there's no restrictions. Or Sedgwick says, we tried to call your doctor, but your doctor didn't respond and so they called the doctor on one day and then they might have called him the next day and that doctor wasn't available which is no surprise because everyone knows when you try to call a doctor you can't even get an appointment for five days anyhow so Sedgwick denies your claim now what do you do as you're a claimant you, you have no income coming in they say oh you have 180 days to appeal I feel, although I'm not saying this is Sedgwick's game plan, but from what we see certainly, Sedgwick is looking more to find any excuse whatsoever to deny the claim and then put a claim in a position where they have absolutely no money, they have 180 days to appeal. In a lot of Sedgwick type managed claims, there's usually two appeals required. And what Sedgwick's doing, and I know from this experience that you and I discussed with one of our clients just the other day, they say, okay, you have an appeal. Well, we know from an ERISA governed claim that when you do an appeal, an appeal is supposed to go to a new person who denied other than the person who just denied the claim. That's that, you know, that Chinese wall where it's supposed to be a completely new review. So what Sedgwick does is they say, send us in your information. The person who initially denied the claim will look at it again and then send it possibly to the same doctor or whoever their internal medical people are and then in most cases deny your claim again and then send it off to the next person which is totally improper and illegal for them to do that and i'm not saying this is their company-wide practice but steve we know from our my most recent conversation with somebody at sedgwick where she said yeah if you send in additional records i'm going to be the one this representative from sedgwick who's going to look at the file and then I'll send it over to someone else for medical and then maybe we'll send it over for an appeal. So that totally flies, you know, in the complete face of ERISA. Um, very frustrating because when I spoke to this, this woman at Sedgwick and, and she had the attending physician statement from our client's treating doctor, which said this person, this claimant cannot work, this person cannot sit for more than three hours a day. When I spoke to the Cedric representative, her interpretation was, well, the doctor said she can sit for three hours a day. And I was like, yeah, she can sit for three hours a day. There's 24 hours in a day. She can sit for 10 or 15 minutes. Then she needs a break for 30 minutes. She can sit for another five or 10. Then she needs to lay down for an hour. So when I spoke to the claim rep, I said, well, what kind of job is going to accommodate her where 
She can maybe sit 15 minutes and then not at all in the entire day. She can't work like that. And she said, well, I don't make that determination. I just sent it to the doctor who determines restrictions and limitations. So I said, well, did you make the decision to deny the claim? And she goes, yeah, I did. Well, I said, well, but you just said you relied upon the doctor's restrictions and limitations. If you don't think the doctor's restrictions and limitations are reasonable, then why don't you make a decision to say this person can't work? To which she replied, well, I'm not a doctor. I don't have any medical training. I just go that there's not enough restrictions and limitations for total disability. And the famous words that I get from Sedgwick that I bet anyone who's watching this video, that's our company policy. So it's frustrating even for us as disability insurance attorneys who deal with this every single day from every company to hear that's just our company policy and to not look at the claim fairly and to seem to have a company-wide practice of let's deny the claim, ask questions later because we're going to strong arm these people into not getting paid. They're not having any income in. They'll go back to work. We'll look like heroes for the employer that hired us and the claimant will basically be screwed. Yeah, there, there's a, a complete lack of accountability on a lot of what's going on and they're continually trying to pass the buck onto someone else and, and move it and place blame somewhere else and where you have to go through this. And you're right, it's, it's a typical technique to, you know, like you said, it's, it's essentially starving the person to submission. They have no choice but to try to get back to work. And with these, these third party administrators, the interesting thing is, is like you said, they're hired by the company to run it. Well. If they're approving too many claims, is this company going to keep going back to them or are they going to find another third party administrator? So they have a very vested interest to try to deny the claim and basically put people through such a, a nightmare of sorts that the people just say, you know what, I'm just going to try to go back to work and do what I can. When they go back to work and they face the potential of not being able to do the job and being fired. Right. And a lot of times what a lot of claimants watching these videos don't realize is that this happens on what's called self-funded plans. Mm -hmm which means that instead of a big giant insurance company paying these benefits, it's being paid by the actual company itself. And the company itself that's paying the plans is the same one that's paying Sedgwick either a price per claim or a monthly fee or whatever it may be to administer the claim. So when Sedgwick meets with them, and if you go to the Sedgwick website, you can see that they do all kinds of monthly reporting and forecasting as to what the expenses are from the company for their employees versus what they have for people who are out of work and how that affects their bottom line. So Sedgwick is very savvy, very aware of exactly what's going on as to the impact of paying people their disability benefits and what losses there could be to a company from keeping them out of work. But just to take it a step forward, something Sedgwick just did two weeks ago, which was horrific. We have a client that has brain damage, so much to the extent that she has a legal guardian appointed to represent her. And Sedgwick, because it's almost like a matter of routine, says, we need to do an independent medical exam of her. And they're paying her. And this, this was, happens to be a claim that happened in Florida. And we said, okay, under Florida law, Florida Supreme Court, we want to videotape the exam because we don't trust the doctors you're hiring and we don't trust you, Sedgwick. They said, no, we're not going to allow you to. Why? It's our company policy. Well, I sent them the Florida law saying you have to allow. I called the doctor's office who was doing the exam. He said, no problem to video it. Now we have our client shows up to the exam. I send the videographer. I'm on the phone with Sedgwick. They say, oh, we'll have a supervisor call you um, to let you know whether or not you can do the video. They never call me back. My client sits there for an hour. Finally, my client had to make a decision, either go through with the exam or not go. And I told the client, if you don't go through the exam, they're going to automatically just deny you and say, you didn't cooperate. You didn't go to the independent medical exam. Well, client goes through with the exam. Three days later, we get a letter saying your client's been denied benefits. She didn't show up to the exam. We call back Cedric and we say, yes, yeah, she went to the exam. We also have a video of her at the exam because you wouldn't allow us to video it in. And we call the doctor's office. Well, it took them a week and a half to figure out that the vendor that they hired to do this independent medical exam was giving Cedric bad advice that our client wasn't there when in fact she was actually there. So they stopped our client's benefits for two weeks and they ended up calling me back two weeks later and saying, sorry, we made a mistake. She actually was there. But just the amount of conversation that went on and the contact from me telling them that day, yeah, our client's there and we have a video and we spoke to the doctor and they still said, no, she wasn't there. It was just, this is the kind of conduct that goes in, goes on day in, day out with Sedgwick. And uh, let me shift gears a second because there's tons of cases out there that, um, are available about Sedgwick and claims being denied. But 
Sedgwick's also very like, like they want to keep their conduct secretive as to the way they act. And um, when we do searches on the internet to see what other people are saying, just to see what's going on in the community. And the reason we do these videos is to make people be aware of what's out there. We came across another blog out there about Sedgwick and a gentleman by the name of Robert Delsman, who actually was very frustrated. Um, I think he had worked for GE as an employee. His benefits were denied and he created a blog and did a whole postcard campaign um, expressing his feelings about the way Sedgwick handled his claim and he has a very detailed blog about the Sedgwick claims process and about his experience. Well, lo and behold, this goes back to 2009, Sedgwick sued him and they said, you can't slander us or you can't defame us and you can't say these things about our company and you can't talk about your experiences with the company and good for him, he fought back on his own against them trying to shut down his blog and his postcards that he was sending and the court dismissed the claim that Cedric fired, filed against him saying no, he has a right to say these things and you can't bring any of these actions against him. So Sedgwick's trying to act you know, in this manner with their claims and not allowing anyone else to like know about it, whereas there's probably hundreds if not thousands of potential claimants out there who've unfortunately had their claims wrongfully denied. I mean, I'm fortunate that you and I and our other lawyers are able to help people fight back against these companies, but especially with short-term disability, which is what most of the Sedgwick claims are, it's, it's very difficult to do it quickly and try to get people paid. Especially when the short-term becomes a precursor to the long-term. Right, and then sometimes they can't even file for long term because their short term got denied. And then even, you know, I just wanted to say what's the most recent case that's come out. And there was a case recently out of New Jersey um, against Sedgwick where the judge issued a 56-page opinion, which is the opinion that I'm holding here. Um, and basically they initially granted benefits to the claimant. And then after eight months they said, no, we don't think that you are... Um, disabled anymore, we think that you can continue working as a branch manager for a bank, even though her doctor clearly stated that she had um, significant limitations that prevented her from doing her job. For example, she was limited to sitting for three hours, standing for two hours, um, she could only walk for an hour a day, and she could only look at a computer screen for two hours a day. He said if she could work, it would be difficult and she would need regular breaks of 45 minutes to an hour. To which Cedric, of course, said, well, that doesn't make you totally disabled, which in everyone else's world, that is total disability. And the court, for a variety of reasons, came back after in, um, in 2011 from a claim that goes back to 2007. So that's how long this person had to fight this, four years, and said, no, you were totally wrong in the way that you administered the claim. Um, you ignored the fact that she was approved for Social Security Disability Benefits. You didn't consider that. You cherry-picked the doctors that you ended up hiring. Even though the claimant wasn't able to prove how much Sedgwick had worked with these particular doctors, the court still made notice of that. You didn't tell the claimant exactly what they needed to do to perfect their claim. Sedgwick also tried to say, well, you need to give us objective evidence, even though it wasn't in the policy, but they continually wanted more and more objective evidence, even though this person had rheumatoid arthritis and lupus and submitted positive blood work findings. That's, that still wasn't enough. So, um, and basically, the court said, all of your actions that you took were arbitrary and capricious. They were not reasonable, and they reversed the case. Now, what's sad is that they reversed the case during the own occupation period, so this claimant now goes back, benefits back to 2009, but now they have to go through the any occupation period and determine whether or not they're able to perform any gainful occupation because Sedgwick never considered that. So, you know, the sad thing is, is they win the claim, but they're still stuck with Sedgwick. And if Sedgwick denies this person's claim again, I mean, another four years of fighting. Um, it could be. This woman's going to have to go back against them. So, um, you know, we always tell claimants who have Sedgwick, Sedgwick disability claims, be super careful when dealing with them. Be prepared for a battle. Unfortunately, and I don't say this about most of the other companies, if you have a claim that's being administered by Sedgwick, there's a very high chance that the initial claim for benefits is going to be denied. So if you have been denied or you're considering filing, please call us. We're happy to discuss your claim. We always offer a free consultation, and we look forward to the opportunity to try to help you.